This video is on using something called formal charge to evaluate molecular structures, particularly when there's more than one plausible Lewis structure um, that meets the octet rule and conceivably could be stable. Now, formal charge basically it's a number of valence electrons that the neutral atom starts with versus the number of valence electrons associated with the atom once it's in a molecular structure. The key idea is to count them carefully. We all know how to do the first part. When you're looking at a structure, however, the second part can be difficult. For example, if you're looking at nitrogen, nitrogen starts off with one, two, three, four, five valence electrons, right? When it gets in, let's say it's in ammonia, NH3, right? Um, we count the, now, so we go, we have five to start with minus the number of valence electrons in a molecular structure. Now, in this particular circumstance, Okay, we have one lone pair that counts as two, plus considering each bond contains two electrons, one of those two electrons is considered to be from nitrogen, basically. So there's one here, another one here, and another one over here, which means we have a total of five electrons, which gives the nitrogen a formal charge of zero. Now, a formal charge of zero is considered to be the most stable situation. And in fact, all those rules on like, or general generalities about the number of bonds atoms form would give an atom a formal charge of zero. So in other words, if oxygen were to have, let's say, two elect two bonds, let's say like in the water molecule, right, dot, 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 oxygen starts with six valence electrons. It's got two here, the pairs are its own, two here, plus half of each of these bonds, so one plus one down below, right, gives it six, and again, has a formal charge of zero. So if atoms are doing a uh, the usual stuff, which usually happens in organic molecules, by the way, like carbon will make four bonds with its four valence electrons. Half of the electrons in those bonds is four because it's eight electrons and four bonds, and yet four minus four equals zero. So when things are doing what you expect them to do, they get a formal charge of zero. However, in many cases, there are molecules out there in which the formal charge is not zero. Now, when picking a plausible structure, there are some basic rules. So there are only really two rules here. When evaluating a structure, you want all the formal charges to be as closest to zero as possible. So if you get in like plus twos and plus threes or minus twos and minus three, that's probably not a likely structure to exist. That doesn't mean that structure really doesn't exist in terms of what we're going to call resonance later on. But in a resonance, when you're dealing with resonance, it would be the one of the less likely structures of the possible structures out there. We'll talk more about resonance later. The second rule is all things being equal, if you have two different structures, each of which has formal charges that kind of are both equivalent, pick the one in which the negative ends up on the most electronegative of the elements. So let's start with an example here. So let's start off with a really simple example that we only have to use the first rule on, and then we'll switch to a more complex example where we have to look at the electronegativities to make a determination. So we're considering two alternative structures for carbon dioxide or CO2. Now hopefully by now, just from regions, you understand this is the right number. But we can evaluate these two structures. Now these both meet the octet rule. We've used all the valence electrons. So these are legitimate Lewis structures that you could conceivably draw. However, one of them may be more plausible than the other based upon formal charge. And really with formal charge, see how close to um, what we expect an atom to do is this structure. Like we expect it to do this usually. Is it way off what we, our expectations are or is it closer to it? And formal charge is a formalized methodology to determine is the atom doing what we think it usually does. Okay, so here we go. So if you look at the structure on the left, we can evaluate the formal charges in each of the atoms. Now, um, each of the oxygens obviously starts off with six, so we'll call this A, B, and we'll call this C. So A and B, that's your carbon, and that's C. Maybe I should be, you know what, let me erase that. And just to make life easy, we'll call, um, we'll make the oxygens A and B, and we'll make the carbon equal to C, all right? So both of our oxygens start with six valence electrons, and our carbon started off with four. And we're basically going to subtract how many electrons it now has in the molecular structure. So we have a pair of electrons here, a pair of electrons here, and two bonds. And half of each of two bonds is two. So we, the first oxygen atom has six minus six. Its formal charge is zero. 
The second atom over here, okay, the, the second oxygen atom, and it should have another pair of electrons here. I don't know how that disappeared there. All right. If we look at that one now, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and it has one more from the bond. So it has seven. So it's a form of charge of minus one. And our carbon, which had four valence electrons to start, has uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one in each bond, right? Plus the two up there, so it's minus five. So there's a formal charge of five by negative one. If we look on the other side, um, let's see what we get over here. So over here we have, we're going to label this A, and we're going to label this B, and we'll label this one uh, C again, right? So this is A, B, and C. And we're going to start with the same number of valence electrons to begin, 6, 6, and 4. And we look at the uh, oxygen. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, right, I'm doing much of dots up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 6. The other oxygen on the other side. 4 electrons as right, three pairs, half of each bond, so minus six. And the last one, the carbon, start off with four electrons and ends up with half of each bond. There's four bonds, each has two electrons, right? So one electron from each bond belongs to the carbon, minus four, and so we get a bunch of zeros. Because they're all closest to zero, this is definitely your best structure. Now, let's look at a different situation in which we have two structures that are not all zeros, all right, and we have to determine which one is the most plausible of the structures. All right, so I've kind of set this one up in advance so we can do it a little quicker. Uh, we have two forms of N2O, and we're trying to figure out which is the more plausible of the structures. So we're going to assign formal uh, charges to all these guys and see when, which one is more is possible. Um, these are all done in accordance. I've set these up in advance so the, right, the number of electrons is the same in each of them. You'll note that there are four bonds and four free pairs of electrons, so there's a total of 16 electrons, which is consistent with the five from the nitrogen, the five from the nitrogen, and the six from the oxygen to begin with. So we're not breaking any rules or adding any uh, extra dots somewhere here, right? So let's look at the formal charge of nitrogen today. It has three bonds, half of which, right, of each of those bonds belong to it. So, and it's got the two over there, so these two. So it's got five minus five. That's got a formal charge of zero, all right? Um, the next nitrogen over this one over here has one electron here and then another three over here. So it's got a total of four. It has a formal charge of plus one. And for C, this oxygen over here has one, two, three, four, five, six dots as free electrons plus one. So it's minus seven. Formal charge of minus one. Okay, that's not bad. You'll get if you try to do some of these, you can get formal charges of two or three or something. So these guys are hovering around zero, and that's good. All right, that means this is plausible. But let's take a look at the next structure. If they're all zeros, that's definitely the right answer. Okay, but let's see what happens. Okay, so let's look at nitrogen A. In this particular case, nitrogen A has one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, half of each bond, right? So it's got six, so the nitrogen here is negative one. The nitrogen in the middle is five minus four, because it's got half of each of the bonds, which is equal to positive one. And the oxygen has one, two, three, four, those are the free electrons, and another two from the bond. So six minus six equals zero. If you look at the numbers, they're all exactly the same. There's a zero, a plus one, and a minus one, all hovering around zero. And by the way, all the formal charges I failed to mention earlier, need if it's a polyatomic ion, have to equal the charge of the polyatomic ion. So I'm sorry I failed to mention it earlier. And the second thing I should also mention is that um, if it's a polyatomic, like if it's a neutral molecule, they should add up to zero. So this is good. So this adds up to zero, and this one adds up to zero, which means for a molecular structure, uh, they're plausible. I'm sorry that I forgot to do that. You shouldn't have it add up to some number other than the actual overall charge of the piece of matter. All right, with that in mind, I'm going to pick this one over here. And the reason why I'm going to pick it is because of rule number two. All things being equal, oxygen is the second highest electronegativity, so it should get the negative formal charge. And that is the reason why I choose that structure over the other one. So, just a quick summary here. When you're evaluating formal charge, the first thing we look at, okay, is to make sure that um, they have the lowest possible numbers, which means closest to zero, okay? 
right? So it's sort of an absolute value thing here. The second thing is that they should add up, and I forgot to mention this earlier, they should add up to the overall charge. So either zero if it's a molecule or a charge if it's polyatomic ion, like a nitrate should have, they should all add up to negative one if, if it's to be plausible. And the third thing is, if you're given this choice between two things that seem exactly the same, the, the high electronegativity should get the negative value. All right, that's it, that's formal charge.